All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. And as you probably already know, it's January the 10th, 2022. Happy New Year. I uh, hope everybody had an enjoyable holidays. Uh, I want to remind you about next week's meeting, January the 17th. We have a unique opportunity to see and hear Freeman Patterson. If you're not familiar with Freeman's work, I recommend you check it out. There's a link in the email that I sent out, and I'll repeat that email uh, at least twice before the meeting. Uh, but as you can see from the collection of five books I have, I'm a fan of Freeman Patterson. Okay, uh, Excellent author. Uh, I, I assume he's a good speaker too, but I haven't heard him speak in person. But uh, I do have a collection of five of his books, and I highly recommend them. So... Uh, uh, please consider joining that uh, presentation next Monday night. It is a webinar. It was organized by the Burks Photographic Society. Uh, we are helping to sponsor it along with the Lancaster Photo Group. Okay, so uh, no charge to you. The club's picking up the tab on that, uh, but this is a unique opportunity. He's one of these, uh, again, internationally known presenters, authors, uh, workshop uh, sponsor. Uh, it's one that, that you don't want to miss. The, his presentation is called The Call of Creativity. All right, let's turn it over to Joe for a couple comments about things that are happening or, or have happened. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, this past Saturday, we had our trip to uh, Bayshore Farm. This is part of the partnership with the uh, West Shore Photography Club, the West Shore Historical Society, and the Art Center School and Galleries and we're photographing historical sites within the West Shore area. We have had three organized trips to historic sites and uh, we have left and that will be this coming Saturday. And that, Dennis, do you want, Dennis, do you want to mute everybody? Can you uh, do that, please? Yes, I'll see if I can figure out where the dog's coming from. Okay. So, um, so we have our, our last trip that's organized and that's it. Hey Joe, I think I just muted you. Oh, you'll need to unmute yourself, sorry. Okay, no, there we go. <laughs> okay, so we have our last trip this uh, coming Saturday at the Bittner House and we'll have the, uh, the munchies there uh, and hot coffee. And if it's anything like this past Saturday where we had 27 people, uh, total showing up for the uh, the shoot. It, they're a lot of fun. And basically on Saturday is photographing a historic house. And it should be a short trip. I would guess maybe you'd be there for 30 to 45 minutes uh, photographing the house. So that's what we're going to be doing. And all that is in preparation for the gallery opening that we're going to be having at the Mechanicsburg Art Center School and Galleries for the month of March. And there, you have a deadline, which you're gonna get some information on it, uh, to submit some images digital to us. And then we're gonna probably be having a little session on how to prepare your prints, because this will be a print that you'll submit to the Art Center, and then they're gonna hang it in their professional gallery. And then we're gonna have a gallery opening with, um, uh, wine and cheese, and you can bring your family and friends, and all the images are for sale. And the Art Center School and Galleries will take care of the uh, the paperwork for the for the sale of those. But you're going to get a lot more information on that. And um, so that is about what we have, Dennis. Very good, very good. Okay, thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, let me reinforce that that the the end product of these trips is to have this month long print exhibit. Uh, many of you will remember the exhibit we had at Hershey Gardens for two years pre-pandemic, and that was very well received. We hope to have at least 60 prints, hopefully more, uh, for the, the exhibit. So as Joe said, it'll be a big uh, opening reception. We're going to have uh, hold a couple of classes. Uh, Janice Links, executive director of the West Shore Historical Society, is going to talk us one evening about the society. Uh, I'm going to do a presentation, I think, on iPhone photography. Uh, Joe's going to do a presentation on what, people around the world, Joe? People around the world, yes. And he's been around the world to photograph people, so he knows. I uh, have a lot of good examples. 
So it should be a, a really neat thing. Uh, I was interviewed for almost a half an hour this evening on the phone by Joe Kress uh, from the Carlisle Sentinel. So he's doing an article. Uh, believe me, Janice is gun ho about this. She is getting people involved. Uh, she's even roping Joe and I into a radio show uh, on a program that we're going to talk about this presentation. So she really is, is hyping it up and it should be a lot of, lot of fun, good exposure. Uh, so I highly encourage you to participate. Shoot with the idea of coming up with two prints. Uh, the ideal thing would be that the, your, your prints would be of one of the historical sites like the Baysor Barn or the Steeford Bridge Road Bridge that we photographed, but it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. It could be a macro shot of ice or leaf or, or you know, anything, as long as it's been taken within the boundaries of the West Shore Historical Society. So that's the end result. Think in terms of prints. And Joe and Mike, I think are gonna do, as Joe said, a, a little presentation to help you. If you're not used to printing, uh, some recommendations for you, where you can send your uh, file to have it printed, how you wanna format it, uh, what aspect ratio you wanna consider, you know, all those sorts of things, okay? All right, let's get on with the show. We have an image review to do. Um, I'm happy to say that Lori Snyder is here with us tonight. She's going to be the reviewer. And our theme, as you already know, probably is night photography. So uh, Lori, if you have anything you'd like to say in the way of an introduction, you're welcome to do that. But how about if we um, share your screen and make sure we have our images ready to go. And uh, then I'll turn it over to you. As usual. Yeah, just a preliminary comment. As usual, what we'll do is Lori will give her critique and then we'll ask the photographer to comment uh, about his or her image. Okay, we won't open it up to everybody, but we'll ask the, the photographer specifically. So Lori, it's all yours. Okay, hello everyone. I don't know, do you see the no, not, screen, my screen? Yet. No. You don't? Okay, let me know when you do. Okay, yeah, you're looking for that little green box at the bottom. Once you click on that, did. a white box will open up. Find yeah, the let me icon. try it again. Okay, the I did put. hit share screen. Initially, I was limited to, I couldn't share it because I, you didn't open it up for me to do that yet. Oh, I see um, it now. Okay, and I know you need it to be full screen. Look, looks like we're looking at your whole uh, desktop. Right, there we go. Yep. Okay, for oh. some reason, you weren't coming up on the side before, so. We're good. Yeah, so now it's all here. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say about yourself? Or, I mean, there might be some um, people in the meeting who uh, aren't familiar with you or your work. I would just say that typically night photography is not something I shoot often. So it was nice to actually view these images and kind of inspiring and encouraging for me to go out and uh, maybe do a little bit, bit of it myself. I live in the middle of an apple orchard, so I'm inclined to shoot a lot of the scenes that are around me. Um, so it was actually kind of nice and again, inspiring to see some images, whether it be in the city or even out in the middle of a starry night. Um, so I appreciated all of your uh, interpretations of the theme. I teach a little bit at Hack, I mean, Hack, ah, sorry, at Calc at the Learning Center. And um, I uh, exhibit at different galleries in the area as well as have done a lot of the art shows in the area from uh, Mount Gretna to um, Foundry Day. Um, so that's essentially what I do. But again, I focus mainly on um, landscape photography. I do, uh, and I'm inspired oftentimes by nature. And um, typically if I photograph people, it's either self-portraiture or it's just um, images of my family or people close to me. So. Those are typically my uh, areas of interest, so. Thank you. Okay, so for night photography. And the first image, night, Nature's Fury. So I think the title pretty well encapsulates um, the essence of this image. You get the sense of the anger and intensity, you know, that you feel during a lightning storm. Uh, with the piercing light in the midst of the blackness of the sky. Um, and I enjoy the framing and um, the way that the, uh, 
the cropping with the tree line down here. It, sometimes with the black screen, it's a little hard to see where the image stops and start on night images. So that's one thing that I'm gonna have, you know, you might have a harder time seeing, but with the tree line and then the division of the clouds and then just this little peekaboo of the streak of lightning coming in from the side and then leading down to the really intense light here. Uh, so it was a nice, uh, visually speaking, it divided the frame in a really interesting way. Um, and I like the tonal ranges of the darkness in the trees, as well as some, uh, there's a little, well, the brightness of the lightning, obviously, but then as well, um, just the little hints of the glow and the clouds suggesting, you know, the activity that's going on behind the clouds. Um, and it just overall evokes that sense of awe that you get when you're witnessing a lightning storm. And for the exposure and everything, I would say the lightning, the, you know, it's definitely technically it's very sharp, the lightning as well as the details in the clouds. Um, let's see. Uh, the only thing that I would suggest possibly is because the, and again, this isn't, um, this is just my personal thought. Um, I like this little peekaboo action over here in the clouds. And part of me maybe wants to see a little bit more over here and get more of a sense of a glow that's happening in the clouds. So I thought that maybe you could bring a little bit more of the interplay of the glow of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, and then down here in the dark shadow area, I couldn't decide if I wanted to see more of what this is. Um, it seems like it's a building of some sort. So I couldn't decide if maybe it's a distraction from what's happening up here, or if it kind of gives a sense, you know, or if you bring it out and you can actually see a little bit more of what it is, if it will kind of give a sense of the scale and the enormity, kind of give a sense of the awesomeness of nature in comparison to the smallness of, um, you know, just human and mankind, humanity and mankind. Um, so I didn't know if I wanted to see this darkened to just kind of fit along the tree line or if I wanted to see detail, but I feel like seeing it a little bit may not work as well for me. So I wanted to go one way or another with it. Um, but then I also thought if you, um, if you do lighten it will compete too much with the center focus of the lightning. So, but that was just kind of my thoughts on that. So. Okay, can we hear from the photographer? You'll have to unmute yourself, please. Yeah, this is Mark Corchado, that's mine. Okay, Mark. And Lori, thank you for your comments. And I struggled with that, that's a house down there. It's the rooftop and you can just see the chimney on the right side there. And I, I wanted to bring that in for perspective. Right. Like you were saying, if I brought it that much too much into play, then you're distracted by it. But yet I wanted to bring in some perspective with the lightning and the tree line. And so I struggled with that too. I, I couldn't figure out what to do with it. And I just kind of made it dark. I knew what it was, but obviously you didn't know what it was. So maybe it should have been a little brighter. Well, I could see it was a roof line, but um, I, I almost don't know if it's probably too dense down there to get a ton of detail to make it worth looking at. You know, I didn't know if maybe it would just be too grainy or have too much uh aberration if you brought out the detail of it so but i do yeah. like the idea of the scale and the enorm you know the sense of the enormity of nature against the skies i mean yeah. against the 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 roof line yeah so. yeah i definitely wanted it there for scale I, I, it's a little bit hidden by the trees but yeah it was a struggle <laughs> thanks for your comment <laughs> yeah, mark sure. any any suggestions for people who are trying to capture lightning uh yeah, be at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, just a little technical things here. I just, uh, it was a summer storm a couple years ago. Uh, I just set out uh, my wide angle lens, uh, focus to infinity. Uh, I set a 30 second exposure because the lightning was just so hit and miss. And I got lucky. And I actually got a couple of bolts, some other pictures too. So uh, yeah, I just, I set it for the long exposure as I could. Um, without going to bulb or something like that. And uh, yeah, it just turned out well. Okay, and I think like uh, like fireworks, what you'll find is that if you use a small aperture, F11, F16, 
then the uh, streaks of light will be very thin and well-defined. And the larger your aperture comes, the, the broader the strokes appear. Yeah. Well, this was F11, uh, 17 millimeter. Good, thanks. Thank okay, you. let's go to number two. Okay, Christmas at Children's Lake. So for me, you know, uh, Boiling Springs and the lake is a very iconic place. And this is very pitch, picturesque with the building and uh, the reflection in it. But I think the first thing that um, I thought when I saw it was just maybe just that it was a little bit too much. As much as I enjoy the contrast of the blackness of the sky and the water against the, um, the building, I felt like maybe the building was just a little bit too high key for me and just slightly overexposed in the highlight area and maybe just a little bit too much blackness in the shadow area for the house. Uh, because um, I would like personally to see a little bit more detail, like the detail of the flag, um, maybe a little bit more detail with the wreaths and even just what's happening here on the side of the house. So there's just a little bit of like maybe soft focus and a little bit high key. And um, I'm not even sure what's happening here in this window. It almost seems like a person is out is outside of the window. So there's a lot of details that I'm curious about, but I would like to see more of. And then the only other thought that I had um, was maybe a little separation between the house and the sky. So I don't know if this would need to be dodged a little bit, um, you know, in post processing. And then perhaps I I enjoy the image was just a little bit less in the sky of the blackness of the sky, and then maybe just cropped a little bit tighter on um, the left side. So um, that that and that was just kind of my overall impression of the image. Okay. Who created this image? Uh, that would be me. Okay, would you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, actually, um, it was my first go at doing some night photography. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. I didn't know the settings or anything. I'm still learning. <laughs> well, you're off that. to a good start. Well, yeah, exactly. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I have struggle with numbers. And so maintaining that information in my brain is very difficult because it, it'll go in and write out. So every time I shoot, I'm like relearning how to do it every single time. And the moon was out that night and I'm like, I wanna go see if I can get some better pictures of the moon. And I hadn't done the children's lake before. So I just did it. Nobody's ever told me I can't. So I just did. There you go, do it. Lori, any suggestions for uh, time of day for an image like this? time of day or night? Um, no, I mean, I would say, I mean, if you want the, the, I think it's challenging. It's kind of like working with sunset or sunrise in a way, because sometimes you can have some really high key areas and a lot of, um, a lot of really dark, non-detailed areas. So I think that could be what part of the challenge is, is just being able to get the detail in both. So a lot of this might require more of a post-processing, uh, a, a post-processing thing where you'd have to maybe burn in your highlights. I don't know if you what your what your programs are if you have if you're working with anything at home or not. Um, but I would say maybe burning in where the highlights are. I mean, you could do it a little bit earlier in the day, so you have a little bit of twilight there, so the sky isn't quite so dark. And then there wouldn't be quite a big difference between the brightness of the building and the darkness of the sky, which would be an op, you know, something to consider if you want to still get the glow of the lights from the house and the, the little uh, illuminaries. Yeah, as far as programs, um, I don't really, I mean, I use like a free program because again, I'm not very knowledgeable in a lot of this. Um, I'm pretty basic at what I'm able to do. Uh, my friend James brought me into the club and he's hoping that this would be something good for me that will help me learn and grow a little bit more. But as far as um, editing, I mean, I that's basically all I can do is just the basic edit that I did for this photo, which isn't much because I don't know what to do. Okay, yeah, I mean, so, 
I know you're talking about numbers and maybe it would be too confusing for me to talk to you about aperture and those kind of things and bracketing your exposure so you can have like a little bit of a balance. Um, so if you're working with like, are you familiar with f-stops or uh, shutter speeds and things like that? Because I don't really want to get into all of that if you're still learning. I do. I mean, I, I picked up my camera back in 2016 and I'm self-taught. I've done all this by myself. Um, as far as like numbers, um, it's something called dyscalculia. So uh, essentially my brain just doesn't function when it comes to numbers. So the, the f-stops and the apertures, uh, it's very confuse, confusing to my brain, kind of like fractions in algebra. It just, it, wow. I don't comprehend it. So like I said, every time I go out and use my camera, uh, I mainly do outside shooting. So any of my clients and whatnot, it's always out in nature with the natural light because it's okay. easier for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, a lot of times, depending on the, the time of day, I'm always having to adjust everything until I find whichever one works. Oh, good. I, I think it's safe to say you used a tripod, right? Yes, I did. I used well, a tripod and uh, a remote. Well, see, that, that puts you in a small fraction of all <laughs> photographers in the world because right. most people don't use tripods. Very good. Oh, one thing that I picked up, I just bought a mirrorless camera a couple of months ago. And the one thing I like about, really like about it is you can see the exposure right through the viewfinder. So when you're looking at the image, and you change like the aperture of the shutter speed, the image changes in the picture. And when you take the picture, it looks just like what you saw in the viewfinder, okay? Which is not, you know, DSLR doesn't work quite that way. So it's easier to get a proper exposure, I think, with a, a, a mirrorless camera just by looking at the exposure or looking at the viewfinder. Yeah, you don't have a mirrorless, do you? I have no idea what my camera is. <laughs> Okay, do you know what camera it, it is? It, it's a Nikon D3500. Okay, yeah, that would be what we call a DSLR, digital single lens reflex. Okay, very good, Liz. Well, thanks for entering. Uh, that was your first one. Round of applause for Liz there yeah. for entering for the first time. Hey. Very good, very good. You're Thank brave. You. Go, go, Liz. Go. Okay, <laughs> on to number three. Okay, let the wind howl. Okay, so with this one, sorry, I got to turn my page here. Um, So this is one of those where I feel like um, sometimes a title can either detract from an image or it can lend to an image. So I do feel when I, I didn't really look at the title, but when I looked at this and I just kind of felt like the overall sense of comfort and home um, in initial viewing. And then I looked at the title and I just could get that overall sense of it. Like, um, so whoever did the title on this, I felt like it was a title that worked with your image and didn't detract from it. Um, so, and I do think the framing of it is really nice as far as the leading lines up the stair rail here. And then you can kind of see the glow of the, the door and the light here. And it just kind of takes your eye into the house. And then you kind of look here and you look inside and you, I don't know, possibly envision someone sitting in there reading a book. So the ambient light in this is really nice. And I also appreciated the framing with the leaves. So um, let's see. And there's just a sense of calm. And, um, and it just is a very inviting image and inviting to come inside. Um, the only thing that I would say about this is that you can't really tell it from the screen, but it does extend over here. So, and it almost is an equal balance to what is over here on the left side of the brick. And I felt like it was maybe a little bit um, abrupt, like going up the stairs. And I almost felt like to actually crop the image, I would wanna just crop it to where I could see the glow of the door and kind of follow the light up the stairs to the glow of the door and then into the house. So again, that's just my personal preference. I felt like the cropping should probably not include this extra little rectangular space. Um, but I do appreciate all the little details I see and the exposure is really nicely done. Um, and I like seeing all the little, um, uh, 
I don't want to say crevices in the stone, but I know it's called something in the masonry work, but I don't know. I'm trying, I'm, I'm losing what that's called. The only thing that I was wondering over here in this area is there's something, I'm not sure if there's something going on with the bricks over in this section. And I don't know if it's just created from the shadow of the trees or not the bricks, but the stone. There's something a little bit maybe different than in this section. And maybe that's just because it's in the shadow and for whatever detail it brought out, it just made it, them look a little bit distorted. But other than that, I think it's a lovely image and, and um, the framing is really nicely done. Um, but again, I would prefer just for this dark area here to be uh, uh, propped from the image. Okay. Could we hear from the creator? You will need to unmute yourself. Let's see. The photographer is going once, going twice. Rick Freer, can you tell us who the photographer is? Yeah, this was done by George Ryan. George Ryan, he apparently is not with us. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to number four. What the Dickens? So I'm assuming, maybe I'm wrong, but this is a nod to a Christmas Carol and the three apparitions standing on the bridge. Um, what I appreciated about this image is the, um, the symmetry of it and the leading lines up to the images and just overall, um, you know, the framing with the windows and the archway, and even just this nice little touch of the leaves coming down into the space. Um, the only thought that I had would be over in this right side, it was just a little bit dark. And I felt like maybe in this section here, it could just have a little bit more lightness to bring out the detail and just to further add to the symmetry. Um, but again, I do appreciate the leading lines and just the way it overall um, directs the eye through the frame and up to I'm guessing what is the main um, essence of this or these people where everything is very sharp and focused and clear. They, their movement is kind of creating a sense of um, like a ghostly um, image. And um, I also just appreciate the little orbs of the light, but everything is very tack sharp and um, exposure is nicely done, so. Okay, let's see if my guess as to the, who the photographer is, is correct. Let's see, you'll need to unmute yourself. No? My goodness. Could we hear from the photographer, please? Rick, who's the photographer? Ron Stefansek. Oh, okay. Okay. I missed my guess. <laughs> I guess Ron's not with us this evening. Let me check my list here just to make sure. Okay. In alphabetical order. No, he is not. Okay. Thank you, Laurie. Let's move on to number five. Reflections of Harrisburg. Okay. So immediately I just was, um, you know, you could see the vividness of the color and the city lights, and there's just a lot of energy to the image. Um, there's a really nice leading line with the bridge and into the city and even over here to the street just kind of um and then there's just this nice little um element where there's just um sense of nature add to all the interruptions of the human element so i appreciated the framing of keeping um this tree or bush in the image as well as a little bit of this little grass patch and i like that you can see a little detail down here in the grass, which sometimes, you know, I'm sure that there was probably a little post-processing to bring out a little bit of those details. Um, and I like that you can actually see for it being, I'm not sure if this was a twilight image, but I like that you can see, you know, um, a little bit of detail in the clouds in the sky. So that I felt like kind of lent to the image. Um, I 
Um, the one thing that I thought of with this image is that um, maybe even though I liked seeing the, the image in the clouds, I did appreciate just a smidge darker, just a little bit enough. And what happened is all the glow of the, the bridge and the lights and the color just really became more vivid. But you could st still see the details of the cloud without detracting away from that. And as well, the only other thing that I noticed with this is the bridge kind of goes a little bit downward in the frame and that's you know fine. But what I was thinking is in order to bring the bridge really front and center is that I would, um, I thought to just crop a little bit off of the bush and just to, I, I appreciate the introduction of it and the framing of it, but I also think maybe just a little less of it would, um, just really put it on what I feel like the focus and the attention is, is the colorful bridge. And then to um, and then to correct a little bit of the bridge going downhill when you do the cropping, actually do it at a little bit of an angle so that it brings the bridge at toward the left side up a little bit. And it really just brings the attention directly at the bridge with the line going straight into the city and removes it just a little bit with this bush over here on the side, because it's so dark, um, it um, can can compete a little bit with what you have going in here. So if you just have it enough to introduce the natural element um, without having it be so heavy on the right, I just think that it um, creates a better cropping for the image itself. But overall, I think the exposure is good. I think it has really nice leading lines and there's just a lot of um, energy to the image. Okay, can we hear from the photographer, please? Yeah, that's me, uh, Jim Barlinger. Thank you for the, uh, for the feedback. Uh, I have three versions of this. Uh, I'm struggling to figure out which one I was gonna submit. Uh, I did choose this one, Lori, to, to bring out the grass on the bottom just to add some character to it. So I'm glad you picked up on that. Uh, I see what you're saying about cropping out that bush a little bit to the right. It does kind of dominate the picture a little bit. So I'll go back and do that. One thing I struggle with is, is the red. I'm not sure if you can see that in the first two, you know, red lights underneath the bridge to the right there is not as much detail in there as, as there is for the blue. So any suggestions on editing red? I don't, um, ooh, I'm sorry. I'm giving things away, sorry. I'm trying to like see in at the details a little bit more. And I don't know if it's, you seem to have a lot of details, but I don't, so you feel like it has to do with the red. That I'm actually not, I don't know. Does anybody, Dennis, is that something that you? Yeah, I have an idea. Uh, Jim, are you working with Lightroom? Yeah, Lightroom, yep. Yeah, what you could try is go into the HSL panel and use the targeted adjustment tool to go over and click on a red area when you have the saturation tab uh, active and okay. just click and drag down to desaturate just the reds a little bit and see if that brings out more detail, you know, in the image. Hey, or you could play around with luminosity too, but, you know, drag up and down with those two, experiment a little bit and see if you get more of what you're looking for. But by using the target adjustment tool and clicking on that red, red area, it'll just, just affect those tones. Dennis, adjustment. Adding... Dennis, if I could add something else to that. Yeah, sure, in, Joe. In, uh, in all of our cameras, they record red, green, and blue. And always, always the red channel will typically uh, blow out first. Like for instance, if you're taking a picture of a red rose, if you just take and accept whatever the meter says is the proper exposure, you will have that exact same situation here that you have where you, it, it mushes up the uh, detail in the rose, or in this case, the, the red underneath the bridge. And the only solution to that at capture time is to underexpose it pur uh, purposely on the red channel. And the way you have to do that is to look at the histogram. And if you were to look at the histogram, even on 
Lightroom or whatever right now, you would find that that particular color channel is really overexposed. So you need to do that at capture and just try and not to overexpose the red channel, particularly when you have a lot of very fine detail like this. Okay. Thanks, Joe. And what you're saying is just reduce the exposure on the entire image, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other comments on that one? Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. On to number six. Love and labor, the unbroken law. So I was, I looked this up because I was curious as to where this was. And then it looks like it's at possibly the Capitol in Harrisburg, could be wrong. Um, so I think what's nice about shooting this at night is there's, um, you know, the shadow, shadowing in the background. And then this is like highlighted. So you kind of have a separation of the foreground with the background. Um, it's kind of documentary in style um, because it, um, is cropped into the specific artwork. And I do like uh, seeing the way that this is cropped here though, because it feels, you know, you give, it definitely lends to a sense of I, um, the subjects just hanging on the ledge here and just being, you know, to the point where they're going over or off the ledge. Um, I think photographing artwork can be tricky because I feel like sometimes maybe you wanna, not only just photograph the artwork, but you also want to maybe photograph your impression of the artwork. So there could be nuanced things that you could do to this as far as um, maybe bringing in a little bit more shadow in the detail area and, or a little bit more contrast. I mean, for instance, around the sinews of the muscles and just really creating like a dynamic energetic image that maybe brings it to life a little bit more um, and creates maybe your interpretation of their artwork. So the exposure is good, everything, I mean, as far as it for being a night image, um, and there's a lot of clarity and detail and sharpness. But if you wanna maybe um, lend a little bit of yourself to the image and drama, maybe play with the shadows and the light, or you could even um, crop just little nuanced areas with the connection of the characters between each other and, um, you know, kind of make it your own, I guess is what I want to say with this. Okay, can we hear from the creator? Hi, uh, thanks, Lori, it's Elaine Shook. Um, Hi, this, this is the first time I have shot these sculptures at night. I have, um, photographed them many times during broad daylight and I was amazed at how different they look at night because the statues are carved out of marble and during the day they're so reflective that you see very little of that detail and so that's what I was trying to bring out um, the interpretation my interpretation was so much different at night because of the play of the light in the shadows it really did bring out that three-dimensionality if you will um, but I like your idea of, of creating even more contrast to really enhance those shadows um, to, to bring the whole thing to, to life, so to speak, because I was intrigued by, by how the shadows really brought out the details in the muscles and the, even the texture in the marble itself. Um, I also was intrigued by the, uh, the cool light that was coming from the... Um, balcony above the statuary, as opposed to the warm light coming from the street light from behind me. I believe it was a street light. Um, I liked that contrast a lot. Um, but I see what you're saying about um, deepening those shadows. I think that would be much more effective. Thank you. Yeah, I did. Um, when I'm looking at it, like the, I just saw like little areas of highlight that I thought were really beautiful. And I thought if you even enhance that even more by bringing in shadows, I think it would just really kind of create a whole new dynamic to the, but I agree with what you're saying because when I looked it up, it's this really vivid white sculptures right in front of the Capitol, so. Your, your comment Elaine about the, the lighting is interesting because as I look at it more closely now, I see how, how cool the tones are on the left as compared to the right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a little bit of warmth in this section and a little blue over here, and then a little bit more of a gray in this area. So it is interesting. I did try it in black and white, but without that contrast in tonality, it just didn't seem to be as impressive to me. Yeah. Okay, on to number seven. Holiday scene. So I like what I like about this with the framing is I like the offset of the tree in the foreground with all the um, the pine trees in the background and that it's a different tree which offsets it from the rest of the trees. And I also really what I really like is the webbing of the limbs and the tree the light strung within them. I think that's a really interesting part of the image. Um, um, my thought was though. Um, for the background to be maybe slightly, in general, just for the overall image to just be slightly more dark so that it would separate this tree a little bit more from the background and really make that the focal point. Right now, I feel when I'm looking at it, I feel like they're kind of competing with each other, the background and the foreground. And what happens is if you make it just slightly darker, it'll really make the lights pop and separate as well as separate all the veinings and the limbs while still keeping that really nice glow that the image has, the warmth from all the um, ambient light. And um, the only other thing that I thought was a bit of a distraction to the image was just these this um, post over here. And I didn't know if maybe it could be shot a little bit further to the right um, to crop that out. I felt like cropping it was almost a little bit too much because it's really nice the way that this limb leads through the frame and then it comes down again to another limb. But I didn't know if just maybe changing the position um, would allow you to capture that and capture the background while also uh, removing this. I'm sorry, did I say to move to the right? I meant move to the left a little bit so that you're um, focusing more um, to the right of the image. So, um, but overall I like the warmth and um, this tree, the way that it's off centered in the frame. Okay, comments from the photographer. Um, this is Judy Kime. Uh, that mm -hmm. is my photograph. And I went out to shoot the photographs of the moon and the holiday lights. And actually it's interesting you say you'd like it a little darker because I did lighten it up so that you could see the, the mountains a little bit better. So that, that's a very interesting uh, comment. And definitely I could have moved. So that's, a, that's um, I thank you for your comments. I went out one morning, um, this was taken in the morning, about 6.37 in the morning. And um, I'm not really, that proficient in low light photography. So I was pretty happy with what I got actually. To, no, to you have a lot, right. You have a lot of detail in the light in the areas. Yeah, I agree. And I was interested to hear what you say because there are a lot of things going on. I like the image, but I was interested to hear if people thought it was too much, you know, with the, the background and the foreground. So, but yeah, I could definitely darken it um, to get that contrast. Well, so it's interesting that you said that they were mountains and in my ignorance, I thought that maybe it was a building with snow on the roof. So apparently I did not even realize it was mountains. So I could see why you would lighten it to want to see that detail. But if I'm being honest, there's a lot, so many things to look at with the trees. I almost feel like the mountains are incidental, I guess is probably the, I don't know. I mean, that's just my own personal um, thought when I look at it, because I, unfortunately, I didn't realize they were mountains. So, um, so does that make sense? And it doesn't even have to be darkened a whole lot, just a little bit creates like yeah. a really nice separation. But then I feel bad because you're losing your mountains. So. <laughs> well, it, this is in Breckenridge, Colorado, actually, that it was taken. And oh, okay. People were looking at this photograph. Uh, they, you know, from Breckenridge, they would know that those were mountains. Okay. Were mountains. So, you know, it depends on the audience, too. 
but um, I did actually lighten it and was not sure what I should have done. So it's interesting to hear the comments. So I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, number eight. Okay, into the light. So I thought this image had a lot of great leading lines uh, and visual interest, a lot of details and things to look at. Um, and the great division of frame, just how you can, with the way that this wall is here, and then you just follow the line back here, but then this wall here almost separates the image in a three-dimensional way, almost halves it. And then there's the second half of the image but I just really appreciate, there's so much to take in and you really do, it does give the viewer a sense that they're in this alleyway. Um, and then that just, and the way that it leads your eye right to this subtle, you know, this glowing light. Um, um, let's see here. It almost though, because there's like a lot of starkness and a lot of times when you go into an alleyway, you kind of expecting to see maybe clutter or more garbage cans or something like that. It kind of felt a little bit like a movie set to me because it is so, I don't know, empty and isolated. And so in that isolation though, the warm, warm glow of the light, like everything else kind of feels like it's not alive, but then that just little suggestion of life, you know, somebody up there in this room and then, of course, there's just the usual sense that you get, you know, you're standing here at this, the, this part of the alleyway, and then you're just, okay, I have to make it to here, but what's over here and what's over here? So I really thought that there were a lot of visually interesting things, and then it still lends itself to the trepidation you might feel standing in an alleyway like that, and then um, deciding whether or not to go through it. But the, the glow of the lights and the shadows, there's just a lot of um, visually interesting things happening and a lot of lines that just take your eye through the frame. Um, the only suggestion I had is um, this wall right here. I wasn't sure. Sometimes when I look at it, it gave the illusion. And I'm not sure if it was because it's um, in contrast with the bush. But sometimes when I look at it, it felt like it was leaning back. And I don't know if that was just like a distortion from the lens on a wide angle, or if it was just because this is so different from all the straight lines that maybe um, it just creates a sense that maybe it's leaning back a little bit. Um, and the only other thing too, I thought would be fun to play with would be to do it in black and white and really kind of play with the contrast and the light and really create a sense of drama with black and white. I just think it would be fun to see it that way, but then you'll lose, you could lose the glow of the yellow unless you kept that there. So, um, and the only other thing um, I thought is maybe just make the darkers just a hair, the dark colors just a hair darker and really pop the difference between the light areas and um, the dark areas. Not enough to lose the detail, but just um, enough to make a little bit, um, just the more of a contrast between the two. But again, I don't think those are make or break it things or necessary things. They're just ways to maybe make it look a little different and um, change the feel of the image, so. Okay, let's hear from the creator. Oh, uh, Karen Cummings, thank you, Karen. I see your comment. Karen says browsers preventing access to her microphone, but she appreciates the comments. Okay, Karen, if you get that working at some point, let us know and uh, you, we'll give you an opportunity to comment on the image. I think it's one of those uh, images that uh, allows for an interpretation. You know, when different people look at it, they get different ideas or different feelings. Uh, as you say, Lori, it might be in, in, in trepidation. You know, what's, be, is there somebody behind that wall or what am I getting myself into? Or, you know, where's this leading me? So uh, yeah, tell, tells a story for sure. Okay, we'll move on to number nine. Childhood. And again, this is one of those where, you know, I'm looking at the image and I immediately think of it as seeming like an older image, something from old school film, maybe the snow kind of alludes to a little bit of the sense of brain. And so when I read childhood, then it does kind of um, give you, um, it kind of harkens back to those snow days that, you know, 
And it gave me a feeling of, you know, a snapshot of your street before going to bed and knowing that you might have a snow day. So that's the, I guess, the feel that I had from the image. And I like, I really appreciate the tonal range with the grays and the, um, you know, the softness of the snow coming down. And just that sense that you're in like a small town, you know, where you have the mailbox and a line on the street and it's just stacking up as the snow comes down. And um, I just think it really portrays that overall feel for what that's like. And having kids of my own now and seeing them, even though they're teenagers, they still really look forward to a snow day. So you just kind of get that sense. And I lived in a little town and this is what it would look like to me. I think if I looked out when I was younger and just kind of see, you know, the snowfall and just the way that it would feel, you know, and it just has a very, and then it also just has the quiet, sense of what snow you know kind of how snow when it when it lays on the on the on the ground how just everything just becomes quiet and um kind of abandoned feeling in a little in a way so um i would say the only thing that i wasn't sure about is this tree over here but then again with that sense of looking into a scene this could kind of um visually be a part of it, like peering around the tree, but it could also be a bit of a distraction. So I don't know if you'd want to remove that altogether because cropping it might be a little bit tight with the um, telephone post. And then maybe just a little bit more detail in some of the shadow, but for the most part, I really appreciate the highlights um, and then the way that the lights just light the street throughout, you know, down the road um, and the way that the road kind of takes your eye through the image along with the lights. So. It gives it a nice sense of depth. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we hear from the photographer? Um, that's mine, Mike Donovan. Mm -hmm. And that is the feeling that I wanted and that's why I called it childhood because it, it makes me think of when I was a kid every time I look at it, all the excitement of thinking that it's late at night but we can still sled. Um, the other thing that I was, the reason that I put it in was that I fought with those street lights <laughs> for a long, long time until I finally just gave up and said, let's see how it goes in the review, <laughs> if they're bothersome or not bothersome. Um, I tried cloning, I tried dropping the highlights, putting detail back in the highlights, but sometimes you just can't beat it and you got to make it part of the image so so that's what i did i gave up on it because i like the rest of it mm -hmm. yeah for me it works in this i mean i know that what you're saying but I, that orb it kind of has like a yeah just the way that it the glow i don't know for me it works and you know the snow kind of gives it a little bit of a softening so hey okay, thank you okay number 10 Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to, can I move this little thing at the top? Are you guys seeing? Yes, we see your cursor. The, oh, we see your yeah. cursor. I just want to move it so you can see the top of the image, but. Um, no, I don't see the top of the image. Oh, you do see the top of the image. Yeah, okay, because I have all the Zoom stuff up here, and so I can't quite see the top. But as long as you guys can, that's fine. Yeah. So this is called the Sen Sentinel, and I just thought um, that there was a really interesting sense of symmetry. Um, and even though it's not quite symmetrical, because as you can see with the way that the lines are leading, and I don't know if there's a way to remedy that, if you can stand a different way, or if it's just never really going to be perfectly symmetry, sym symmetrical. I felt like there was a balance between what was happening here in the foreground, as opposed to um, what was happening here to balance it out in the background. Um, really nice leading lines. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate the, uh, title with the image because the way that it was shot really does give it a sense of like an imposing nature um, just kind of looming over you um, and almost making you feel as though uh, you know do I want to cross this bridge you know into the blackness of the night so um, but there's a lot of really great detail and I like that you can really see 
you know, all the lines extending down into uh, the bridge and the architecture of the bridge. And I think the color choice uh, was really interesting and effective as well. Um, but I, and I also really appreciate the blackness of the night in contrast with the architecture of the, and the whiteness of the bridge, just really kind of creating a stark image. And then of course the glow of the pathway leading your eye back through the frame and the bridge rails. So um, let's see if I have anything else on that. And I, yeah, and I like the idea that, you know, of anthropomorphizing something, you know, so kind of giving it, I don't know if you want to say it's kind of like a transformer, but in, in the sense of a bridge or something like that. So to call it a sentinel and just kind of giving it a um, something inanimate, like a life force to it. I always appreciate that. So hmm. um, the only thing, as I was saying, is I don't know if there's a way to actually make it. I don't, it's not a make it or break it thing for me, but the only thing that I would say is if it could be more symmetrical, um, but it doesn't bother me. But I know that there are some people that are very, um, that that would be a distraction for them, so. <laughs> okay, let's hear from the photographer. Hi, um, everybody, uh, happy new year. This is Dave Marchetto. Thanks very much, Lori, I really appreciate that. You know, I thought of adding one of the wires to the right or taking away one on the left. And you're right, it's not a symmetrical, it's asymmetrical, there's more bridge on the left. This is uh, the Lebanon uh, Valley College um, ah. bridge and it was cold that night. And it was like in the middle of a fluorescent light bulb that uh, there was no detail on the, um, on the uprights. You could hardly look at it. And, um, you know, I use my iPhone for this, so it, uh, you know, it um, was a challenge even, even with, with that. I had to smile when Liz Brown, our newest member, talked about, uh, you know, settings and numbers being sort of daunting. And, you know, I smiled because she's a new member and no pun intended, but welcome to the club, Liz. I mean, uh, sometimes I take a, a notebook with me to remember what I did. You know, in the old days of uh, film in cameras, you had to do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you couldn't remember <laughs> what settings you used for the 12 exposures you got. Anyway, um, I submitted this image um, a couple of years ago during the day, uh, it was a photo, and I got a lot of good uh, comments from the club. Uh, Joe Farrell in particular, uh, you know, really encouraged me to see this, um, the daytime version as an architectural photograph. So um, I, I really, I really appreciated that. And sometimes you just remember these things from, from the club. So I appreciate that, Laurie, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, number 11. Bubble man. So if I'm being honest, I had to like go away from this one and then come back to it because it's just so different as far as, um, you know, try how to assess it, I guess is the way, you know, so I was thinking, okay, how am I going to assess this image? Um, but it kind of reminds me of uh, like, you know, when, so, so I'm not sure what every what's going on here exactly to, um, I don't know if this is more post-processing or if it's a marriage of both um, in-camera and, and post-processing, but down in this area here, it just kind of reminds me of like residual grilled cheese or something like that. <laughs> so then it lent, um, so I definitely see this as being more from a whimsical and humorous point of view, and then also from a creative point of view. Um, it just kind of reminded me of when people say that they see an image burnt, you know, an image of something on burnt toast or something like that. And I didn't, I just didn't really know where this, where, where this, um, person or this character came from and where it, um, how it originated. But again, this to me, it's called bubble man, but I thought this was interesting what was happening here. And it just kind of reminds me of cheese, <laughs> burnt cheese on a grill um, but I really appreciate the fact that it is just kind of fun and lends a sense of humor. And then also there's just like a motion, a movement created with them. I don't know, basically, are they hula hooping or going into a time warp or something like that? But, uh, 
So I just appreciate the creative intent behind this, whether it's, you know, in camera or post-processing. I didn't, I was really basically, I think it's a conversation piece. And um, it just really makes you think like what is happening, you know, in this image. And I didn't know if these were maybe glow bracelets, but it also reminds me of when um, people do um, painting with light. So whoever the photographer is in this, I guess I have a lot of questions to see what is behind this image. Yeah, I'm, curious I'm sorry, to I don't know, too. maybe that's not how I'm supposed to, maybe that's not how I'm supposed to uh, assess it, but. I'm right <laughs> there with you, Lori. But okay. let's hear the story. Who, who created this one? This is mine, Terry Lonick. All right, this, tell us about it. This was uh, taken a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in, I'm in the Hershey Camera Club and we did a night, um, night shots with um, fluorescent lights. The starburst in the back, what looks like a starburst, is a single LED tube of light. The gentleman standing in the center is swirling um, two colors of red and white around him. Um, he's also got another color thing in his one hand. So after I took the shot, I thought, eh, that's, that, I, I need to do something to it. So I ran it through uh, ACDC a program and I put bubble wrap on it. And oh. that's how I got the bubble man. <laughs> uh, that, that night, I didn't get as good a shot as I wanted, but I have other shots I probably could have put in. We used um, a whisk, a, a whisk that you would use to whisk up food. We put, um, uh, can't think of it now. We stuffed it with metal. Um, steel wool. Thank yeah, you. Right. thank you. Steel wool, I always draw a blank on that. We lit it and then swirled it. Right. Uh, well, that's I what I initially, yeah. When I first saw it, I was like, is that what's, was that what's happened? But there's everything is so abstract. I just wasn't really sure, so. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it, it just, how the bottom got in there, I, I, to be honest, I think it was because of the grass was reflecting the light from the, from what we were swirling around with it. It was, it was a fun night. It's, I love to do light painting. It, it's just amazing what you can mm -hmm. do. Thank you for your comments. It's, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to see you what people would think. I've never shown it to anyone before, but thank you. Well, you, you get bonus points for creative approach. Yeah, thank and you. for stumping the, stumping the reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's see what number 12 has to bring. Okay, 9-11 tribute. Um, so overall for a night image, uh, I think this is really well done. Um, there's a lot of sharpness and detail um, with it. And, and I just, the way that it's framed, um, when, you, when you consider the rule of thirds, the right perpendicular line here just divides right between um, the memorial lights, just goes right through it. And then this light going down into water is nice because it kind of is a mirror but on the opposite side of the image, but going down to the water, which kind of breaks up the water and creates, just creates um, movement from, um, from the foreground up into the background. Um, and then I also found this streak, well, I really appreciated the, um, the water, which I know happens when you have like a slower exposure, but the water just really seems placid and peaceful and the gradated sky, the way that it's just like this nice blue and then it um, kind of fades into a darker blue. Um, I wasn't sure what caused the streak though. I was curious about the streak and how it actually originated. And I just didn't know if it was from the movement of the water from a long exposure. And then the only thing that I noticed and the distraction for me on this side is just this little break in the water. And I don't know if that was naturally occurring 
But then I noticed that it seems to almost have a little bit of a line going in here through here. And so I don't know if somehow something became uneven in the water and broke that line. Um, but overall, I think it's nicely done um, and, and it really follows the rule of thirds nicely. Um, and the clarity again for an evening and a night image and just even the way that this light is kind of starred um, is really nice, so. Okay, let's hear from the photographer. Okay, if you're on board, you'll need to unmute yourself. Uh, Rick, who did this one? Chris Mama. Okay. Who was that again, Rick? Chris Mama. Hmm, not familiar. Okay. Is the photographer on board? Going once, going twice. Okay, on to number 13. Okay, Dubois uh, traffic. So this image was really fascinating to me. And when I first look at it, it just reminds me of um, like almost the mechanisms of a clock when you look at it with all the circles and the patterns. Um, this is a really nice leading line leading into it. Um, the sharpness of detail and the exposure for, for evening. And then even back into these buildings, I almost feel like if I, if I blew this up, it would, you could just see into the office building. So I was really fascinated by how much detail for an evening image this has. Um, but it's just a maze that I feel there's so many lines that you could just follow it all the way around through the image. Um, and I also thought this was really fascinating because as highways and cities are, you can see where the traffic is really flowing like mad. And then right here, you see a little slowing down of the cars and the vehicles, which is oftentimes what happens. You're going 70 and then everybody's going 30. But I just think you could just really take this image in for a really long time. Um, and again, it's just really nice with the framing of the buildings, this little bridge going from the, um, along the line in the back. Um, and it just, I even appreciate, it kind of has a futuristic feel to it, especially with the golden glow of it. And when I think of Dubai, I kind of think of gold anyway, just from what I've, when I've read about it, um, that it's a pretty wealthy area. Um, the only other thing, the one thing that I, wasn't sure of was just this little triangle here. I'm not sure it's a deal breaker for me because in this corner, it also, see if I can move you guys over here a little bit. There's just a little bit of darkness up here, um, but I just wasn't sure if this was caused like a little bit of an abruptness um, and cut it off. But I was so um, focused on the center part of the image that I, it was kind of an afterthought thought that I looked over here. So seeing this blown up, maybe it might be more distracting to me, but I just really, because of the way this road led in and just all the things that you could look at, this was kind of an afterthought for me to cap, um, to take in. So, but overall, uh, all I just thought it was a super interesting image, so. Okay, let's hear from the photographer. Uh, thank you, Laurie. This is Joe Farrell, and that's a shot from Dubai. That's the uh, city center, they call it. And uh, we were on a hotel, I think it was about like the 16th floor, to be able to, uh, to capture that shot. And the, we spent a lot of time working on it because the most important thing for me was twofold. One, I wanted to have a really detailed shot, like you pointed out. So I was at an ISO 64, which is a native for that particular camera. Wow. And then I, the shutter speed was really critical because I had to, took many shots at different shutter speeds to get the right flow of the uh, cars without blowing them out. And I remember when I saw those cars right in the front that you pointed out that were stopped, I said, oh my God, how can that happen? Because this was a, 20, a second exposure at F-16 at ISO 64 at uh, 14 millimeters. And I said, why do those cars, they should be moving. But then I realized they were stuck in traffic, like you said. Right. Right. And, um, and I had have this shot in many different variations. I have the Burke Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world in another shot. 
but I had some advice from a very valuable photographer who suggested that I crop it to this way, and I did, and that's what I submitted. So, what, and what's your feeling on the triangle over here? You I know, mean, I don't. I, I'll tell you what my the feeling is that if I were to try and get around that. I had my tripod practically hanging over the railing right. to avoid that. And so the only other choice I would have was that I could have cropped it out and, or I could have used content aware fill and I tried that and it kind of looked, it, it didn't look right. And so the only thing I could do was crop it. And you can see where if I were to crop it, what I would do to the bottom rung of the road there, I would just cut that right off on the bottom and I couldn't do that. So right. I put it in. Yeah, that's what I figured. It just wouldn't, that it would detract from the overall image, so. Yeah. Yeah, Lori, I appreciate your comment about it. it looks like the uh, clockwork, the interior of a clock. I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, that does strike me. All right, very good, number 14. Okay, Backyard Jesus and the Old Duquesne Brewery Clock. So I thought this was a really interesting composition um, with the, juxtap uh, the juxtaposition of the statue um, with the brewery clock, kind of um, the sculpture of being something sacred with the backdrop of like a neon clock on a brewery. Um, I just felt like there was a lot of symbolism when you looked at this and just even this dividing wall here. And it just kind of, uh, it just kind of gives a sense of the divide between the two worlds. Um, you know, the spiritual versus the secular. Um, that's just kind of my uh, feeling that I, that I had gotten from it. Even just the vines being something natural. And then of course the wires. Um, so there's just so many things that kind of contrast each other in this image. And um, and it kind of reminded me, I mean, I grew up in the church, so it kind of reminded me of like Jesus going into the Garden of Gethsemane. And he even has, it looks like there could even be a chalice here, which is what he used um, when he, during the Last Supper and took communion. So it just really gave a sense to me of like two opposite, opposite worlds and places. Um, just the solemn, solemnity in the garden and the energy of a city. Um, I just thought the framing was really interesting and, um, just really interesting contrasts. Um, and again, so, and it's interesting how he's glowing. I'm not sure if that's artificial light. Um, and so again, maybe a, the glow from something spiritual and then of course uh, manufactured glowing of the clock. I just, all around, I just felt like there were so many um, symbolic things in this image. And maybe I took it a step too far, but um, that's just my overall impression. And I just thought it was really interesting, so. All right, let's hear from the photographer. Carson. Uh, uh, this was taken during Christmas week in Pittsburgh, specifically the South Side neighborhood of Pittsburgh. And um, the, the clock is rather iconic for people of a certain age that, that it, it was Duquesne Breer used to be very popular when I was much, much younger. Um, but, and, and though the brewery left, they maintained that clock. They took the, the uh, wording off of it. And we were also, this was, my family got together for Christmas by going to, we, what we did was an Airbnb that happened to be an old convent. So it was a good way for us to um, wow. congregate without being out in the open too much. And the building itself, within the building, you see no references whatsoever to religion or anything. But they left that um, they left that statue out in the back, and I just to me the South Side back when I was younger was filled with little churches and, and convents, mostly ethnic uh, churches it, all through South Side, plus that iconic clock, and it was just amazing that you could look out the back of this con old convent and see that 
remnant of when it was a convent right there with the um with the uh, old with the old brewery clock and and i kind of liked uh the the the, the change the different lighting the blue of the clock the um the the yellow of the uh statue comes from well i, I did some dodging and burning for that, but it, it's mostly reflecting the back porch light. Okay. And so I kind of like the contrast of it. And I just, it just, I found it a very humorous pairing of a couple of long ago um, symbols of the South mm -hmm. Side of Pittsburgh. But thank you for your comments. Sure. Okay, number 15. Boom. So this is a really crisp, uh, a lot of clarity for an image of uh, fireworks. And it looks like it has, I would say, a pretty um, small aperture opening. It's just very detailed and minimalistic. And I really, what I like about it is the straightness of the lines for the fireworks leading up here, but then that just that little subtlety of the one beneath it bending off to the left just adds so much to the image. Um, and I also just like the little nuanced details of the tiny little um, sprinkle, the tiny little sparkles, and then the glow, um, the smoke, coming off of the fireworks, but most of all, it's just really, the fireworks really pop against the background. And so it just definitely shows an expertise <coughs> in shooting, um, you know, fireworks in, in the night sky. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just, in general, it's just a very um, minimal but st um, striking image, so. Okay, let's hear from the photographer, please. Yeah, this is Mark Albano. Um, yeah, uh, Lauren, th thanks, thanks for your comments. Um, this was shot, uh, Dennis, to your point, it was shot at F-13. Um, I was quite a distance away, um, so it was shot, it would probably be 250, 300 millimeters. Um, and, um, Shutter release, shot for about seven seconds. Um, what I was finding, I was taking a lot of these pictures, Lori, and what I was finding was I was keeping my thumb on the shutter too long. And I was, and they started to get very busy. And I started making a little quicker exposures, just letting two or three of them blast off and then closing the shutter. But I've got a couple of questions. And and the one of the questions is, is I have quite a few shots that actually show where the um, where the fireworks were coming from off the ground. And would that have made a picture like this too busy? In your opinion? I, I mean, it would. it's hard to know without seeing it. I don't know, do you get a lot of extra uh, glare from it? I mean, I really just like the simplicity of this um, okay. and the division of the frame. I mean, I just, I, I mean, my thing is always to see it. <laughs> That's kind of, but I, I mean, I just really appreciate the the way that you framed it. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, you know, um, it kind of reminds me of like dandelions or, um, you know, just the simplicity, the simplistic nature of that. And it yeah. kind of harkens to nature. So I really appreciate the way that you did this. Um, I don't think it would necessarily be bad, but I'd just have to see it and make a comparison. Did you feel like it was too bright or too distracting? Um, in some cases, I thought it was too big. It would take got too busy, you know. And, um, and and the other challenge too is, like you said, there's a, you you can see a little bit of the the smoke and the flaring off. And so, you know, I, I kept going. Should I block all that out, or should I just block out most of it? because it's a totally different look when you see the, the smoke and the sparks, spark right. trails coming off the projections. So thank you for your Yeah, I think it was just enough, not, yeah, not too much, not too little, so. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I'd like everyone to, to take note of the uh, white digital border that Mark added. Uh, notice how it uh, delineates the image, the boundaries. 
where in the other ones, if you had a dark image, you, you couldn't tell, as Lori said earlier, couldn't tell where the image stopped and the, the uh, background started. Mark, would you comment about how you created that digital frame? Yeah, um, what I did, I used, um, I did an affinity photo, which is like Photoshop, but you can also do it in on one. And what I did is I brought it in, I made a filled layer that was white, put it to the back of it, and then I resized the picture to be 20 pixels shorter on both the width and the height and the center didn't get in the frame. And that was okay. all I did. Well, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I know Elaine and Judy do that quite frequently with the pictures they post on, on Facebook and it's a nice little accent. So when you're entering a picture into a competition or an image review, you'll wanna keep in mind that the background is black. Uh, so think about how that will affect your image and maybe consider uh, adding a digital frame. Okay. Dennis, six, yes, Lori. Just real quick. So that's what I was wondering. I was trying to look to see on the on that program if there was a way to change the background, just specific for this. I know sometimes people like you know using the black background because mm -hmm. it just presents the images nicer. But for like a nighttime thing, I was wondering if there was a way. I don't use this one, this program really. So I was trying to change the background ahead of time so people could see that, but. Let's see, and that would be the Zoom background, right? It, it's not the PDF. Well, because I have it in full frame for Adobe, I for the Adobe Illustrator or whatever oh, I was told to view the let, image. Let me ask then. Rick. Rick, can you change the background for the PDF, the background color? Um. I created in the, um, the the PowerPoint, which is uh, it, it sets the whole document as a a black background. But yeah, you can change that. Yeah, you want to go to a medium gray? Maybe try that uh, in a, in the next time. See how that works out. We can try it. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah do I don't think you would need it for everything, but just with it being night images, I just yeah, I was trying to change it just so that you could see where the borders were a little bit. For the blackness so okay. thank you yeah. good idea Lori. all right <laughs> number 16. oh barney so i thought that this was a really nice composition uh the way that it has a very soft glow to it emanating from the uh from the um, lighthouse it just feels very painterly um and I also thought it was really nice the way that the with the division of the image, the way that the shoreline kind of separated the uh, reflection and carried it um, down through the image. Um, it just has an overall really inviting quality to it. And the sky back here is just really, um, just the softness of the sky. And you just kind of get a sense of, you know, it being that twilight, I'm guessing it's twilight. Um, and the color is just, is really nice with the blues and the gold, uh, the yellow of the, the lighthouse. And it just has a very, um, peaceful feel about it. Uh, the only thing that I considered with this is maybe just to have a little less glow emanating from the, the lighthouse. It just felt like because everything else feels really soft and inviting, maybe if there was just a, a just a smidgen of less glare here, it would just blend the image even more and um, just kind of create even more of a softness. And I don't know what's creating that light. I'm just assuming that there's a, uh, a really bright light down here in the um, behind the trees that's kind of creating it, but I didn't know if there was a way to just make that just a smidge, um, just a smidge darker. But I like that you can even see this tiny little window up here. So you have the detail, but then you also have softness, which I think really makes it an interesting image because a lot of times when you have the softness, you don't necessarily see clarity in the detail. So I think that's a really nice um, combination. Um, the only other thing I thought is maybe just a little bit less of the sky and possibly um, cropped a little bit to the left, but overall, I think it's a really nice composition. Okay, let's hear from the photographer, please. Thank, thank you. This is uh, mine. This is Chris. Uh, I appreciate your comments. Um, um, 
No. This was taken uh, on uh, New Year's Eve. I decided to take a, a day trip, road trip down to Long Beach Island and kind of scout the area because I'd never been down there. And it was a pretty miserable day. Um, and this, uh, by the time I reached the lighthouse, um, it was, it was kind of late. It was, and even the twilight dog walkers were leaving the area. Uh, so I just, I wasn't even thinking about bringing my camera from my car out to here. So I didn't, but then when I saw that the tide was coming in and I got that reflection, I said, I have to go back to my car and, and grab my camera because if I come back here again, I might not have that reflection, you know? Um, but I sometimes have a hard time finding bulb mode when I'm uh, out, you know? So, and this happened because I don't usually, up to 30 seconds exposures is enough to get what I want. But uh, this, it was, you know, the histogram was showing even at 30 seconds, it was pretty dark. So I just, on the fly, I just said, well, let me bracket it and see how that comes out. And it did, it gave me a, a twice as long of an exposure and half of 30, you know, 15. So I was able to get a usable photo, but yeah, I, I know that. It is very bright in the center there. The, the surrounding the whole lighthouse, there's just lights surrounding the whole at the mm -hmm. ground level, just shining up. So it's um, it is very bright. I guess that's for security reasons. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Chris. I'm curious. What's your last name? D'Amico. Okay. Okay. D'Amico. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Last one, number 17. Cherry Springs State Park. So I just, you know, to me, this is like the quintessential starry night. You know, there's so much detail and all, it's just amazing to see. It's very magical. You just get this really um, sense of the expanse of the sky. Um, and I think what really lends to that is this little, I guess it's a viewing globe from what I, I looked up the park. And so apparently this is where um, photographers or people who are studying the night sky can go to kind of keep out all the extra light. But I'm assuming it's illuminated some in some way. And it just kind of gives it a real otherworldly touch. Um, but I just, I love the gradated sky and how it goes from this really rich, dark blue down to like a paler blue. And then you see where the sun is setting. Um, and again, you, it just gives you a sense of how small we are in the universe. And I really appreciated this line of the really tall tree, kind of this diagonal going and leading your eye down to this open space where this obser observation place is. Um, Let's see. And I just, there's a lot of clarity for a night image. Um, I know sometimes it'd be interesting to see movement in, with the, the stars as well, but I just love all the little pinpoints of light. Um, the only thing that I maybe wanted to see, which I know would be hard because the sky gets darker up here, but just maybe a slight bit of detail in this upper tree to kind of mimic seeing some of the light here. But then I don't know if that you can accomplish that without creating kind of a halo effect. Um, you know, from, from dodging out too much of the sky. So I didn't know if it would be possible to get just a little bit more detail here or maybe even just here. But overall, I just think um, it's just a really um, fascinating and um, awesome, you know, rendering of an evening sky. And just, I mean, all of those star points is amazing. From what I understand from reading it, it's, um, a place a lot of people go to observe the night sky because there's really a lot of limited um, uh, light noise in that area. So, well done. Okay, the photographer. Hi, that's me, Cami Freed. Um, mm. Thank you for your feedback. I might be able to lighten that up in the corner. Um, I'll have to play around with it a little bit and see. I did actually like a, a gradient, horizontal gradient across the photograph to kind of um, get that, you know, change in color there. Um, but this was taken at, at the Cherry Springs State Park and it was 16 degrees at one in the morning 
and it was cold. <laughs> we had to in you're not allowed to drive in because of the light pollution, but it was just me and a couple college kids. So it was, it was a good experience. This was my first attempt at star photography. So is there intentional light at the, is there some, are you illuminating this in some way or um, no, it's just because of the long exposure that it kind of created that glow? I think it, I think it was just because of the long expo exposure because um, there's absolutely no light. Um, mm -hmm. If you do have light, it has to be red lights and you can't huh. drive your cars in. Um, they lock it up at night, so you have to hike in. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty sure that was just, it was a 30 second exposure. Okay. They're very, very white. So I'm wondering if it was just enough. And it was a full moon too. So that oh, be okay. That, that, that explains it. Yep. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much does. Full moon. I was wondering too, but uh, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you, you got uh, uh, that shot on a full moon. And, and the fact that it didn't put any more light on the trees, but they, they absorbed it, I guess. Okay, okay. Uh, any uh, comments or questions from anyone for specifically for Lori? Okay, uh, Lori, I think you did a great job. Uh, we'll, we'll give people a chance here if they, if they do have a question or comment. You did a great job. I appreciate it very much. How about a, a round of applause? You can unmute yourself if you like, but thank you very much. Uh, another shot at that. Any uh, questions or comments from anyone for Lori? Lori, uh, all of us at the West Shore Photography Club, thank you for doing this tonight. It was, it was an outstanding review. We really appreciated it. Yeah, uh, we appreciate the fact that you do your research too and you put a lot of time and effort into it. So it's much appreciated. Very, very thoughtful um, analysis, Lori. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's great to have you look at these. Um, you know, we really appreciate your, your, your styles. It's very nice. Oh, thank you. Very good. Okay, before we end the meeting tonight, I would like to recognize one of our members, uh, Dave Stauffer. Would you like to say anything? Uh, Dave's on the mend, so it's good to see him tonight. Yep, I'm, I'm mending. Uh, that's about all I can say. Well, we're glad to hear it. It, it was, it's, it's, it's going to be a long process. They told me six weeks before I can really do that much. Oh, so, uh, you, you can get on Zoom meetings. <laughs> yep. All yep. Right. yep. This doesn't take lifting anything or whatever. So <laughs> wish it wishing you well, Dave. Very Thank good. you. Yeah, yeah take yes. care of yourself. Yes. Best wishes. Right. Wishing you well. Yes. Yeah. Take care. Okay, Dave. guys. Thanks, thanks for participating tonight. Right. Uh, we hope to see you at the Bittner House on Saturday, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. That email went out this morning. It'll go out again on Friday morning. And then, of course, next Monday night, January the 17th, is the Freeman Patterson. Oh, and that, by the way, starts at 7.30, not 7 o'clock. That meeting will be 7.30 because I didn't set it up, but it'll be at 7.30. Okay, thank you and good night. Thank good you. Night. Have good a good night. night. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Thanks. Lori.